Oh, hello. My name is Mara and welcome to Books Like Whoa. So when I'm filming this, I'm still on bed rest, hence the PJs. Uh, the world is still on lockdown. I'm guessing by the time I post this, I probably won't be on bed rest anymore, but the world will still be on lockdown. Anyway, a video idea that I've been kicking around is kind of a companion one to this uh, video that I did back in November, which was talking about my all-time favorite books and something that I wanted to do every year, like as sort of a video diary essay entry to like mark my evolving taste over time. And something that I wanted to do that kind of went along with that is my favorite series, because actually I think by doing this video, it will change uh, my all-time favorite book listing, because I think in that video, I was I was struggling to how to deal with some of my favorite series um, versus my favorite like individual books. So I thought that since everyone is stuck at home, and I definitely don't think that there's like a ton of new ground I'm gonna cover in this, but, I just thought it might be interesting for me to kind of go over what my all-time favorite series are, my top 10, um, and maybe give you some ideas of series that you might like to try. So this was like a freaking hard list to come up with, guys. I have probably, like you can see, I have a lot of things on this page. Ones that did not make the list include Brothers Sinister from Courtney Milan, Book of the Ancestors from Mark Lawrence, Fool's Gold from Susan Mallory, Narnia from C.S. Lewis, that's quite a statement. Uh, let's see here, the FBI U.S. Attorney series from Julie James, I love that one. Um, the Cat Who books from, oh God, what's her name? She's got three names. Patricia, so I don't, the cat who books, you know those. Uh, let's see here, Father Brown mystery, Peter Whimsey, Lord Peter Whimsey mysteries, Argento Vampire series, Highlander Bride series. Like there were so many series that I really do love that I had to leave off, but I did narrow it down to my top 10. So we'll start at 10 and work our way up to number one. This is very, very idiosyncratic to my taste. I'm sure that there will be disagreement with ordering on this, but it's my list, my rules, so let's just get into it. Okay, number 10 is an entry uh, that actually, I just realized I didn't put the Natural series on that runner-up list, but I definitely should have, because this is a series like the Natural series where I like each and every single book in the series. There's like not any of them that I don't like. Um, my favorite is The Kraken King in the Iron Sea series from Mel Jean Brooke, but I actually think that every single one of the four books in this series that have been released to date are really, really good. There's supposed to be a fifth book, and I'm hoping now that Mel Jean Brooke is writing again under the pen name Mila Vane, maybe we're actually going to get that book. I don't know. We'll find out. But I love this series. It is a steampunk like it's definitely heavy in the romance but equally heavy in the sort of like steampunk action adventure so each book is structured like a romance would be in terms of having um, a main couple that is getting together but then there's also all the steampunkiness I definitely really recommend this this is one of my all-time favorite series obviously I felt like I had to sneak it on the list just because I do feel like each entry is just so strong this is a super good series and one that I would recommend to people who are interested in romance but are not looking for one that is so overwhelmingly romance that the other like fantasy sci-fi kind of things get overridden. Number nine, I'm gonna go with the Hidden Legacy series from Alona Andrews. Now this is a little bit of a risk since it is an actively ongoing series, but I love Alona Andrews. You guess, will definitely see another entry from Alona Andrews on this list. And I just think that these books are so thoughtfully plotted. Um, there's this initial trilogy. This is the last one in the initial trilogy of the Hidden Legacy series. And then there's a subsequent one that is currently ongoing. I just think that they're really thoughtfully structured little arcs. The books themselves work very well on their own, but then they build to something really effectively. And yeah, I just think that Helena Andrews is just, they know how to put a series together really effectively. So urban fantasy with a heavy dose of romance in it is definitely the vibe here. Uh, the magic systems are always super cool. The political machinations are always super interesting. And great, I'm gonna go with good old Sherlock Holmes just because these short stories are definitely like a comfy fave. And you know, it's an interesting series because it's, it's pretty episodic. It's not really serialized. Um, most of these can be read pretty much on their own in any order but I still think the story is super compelling. It's definitely something that has stood the test of time. And I think considering how short these short stories are, it's really easy to hand this to someone and give them, you know, kind of a taste of a classic and a taste of mystery if they're interested in getting into it. But um, I just I just love the Sherlock Holmes collection there. They're a classic for a reason. 
Speaking of classics, we've got my first Agatha Christie entry, and that is Miss Marple, that series from Agatha Christie, the first one being The Murder at the Vicarage, which I really need to say about this that I've not already said. So actually, I, you know, I will say, if I hadn't done the reread of Marple that I did last year, wow, that's weird. Um, yeah, I reread Marple last year, and I think if I hadn't done that, recently I might have put I might have put this lower just because my impression was that I didn't like the marples nearly as much as I like the Paro um but I actually really really enjoy the marples they're they're very good um I'd say that their overall quality is more consistent than the Poirots and for that reason I, I definitely see them as being an easier series to recommend to beginners but I think that the Poirots have higher highs but still this is a fantastic series Miss Marple is such a nosy little old lady uh, one of my new kittens is named after her her name is Miss Jane Marple and uh, yeah I just I, I really do love this series I love love Agatha Christie I wasn't gonna leave one of her main series off this list number six I'm going to put Harry Potter by JK Rowling this is a hard series I'm realizing like I put this on my my best the I put the um, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows on my best favorite books of all time list but I think since then and in making this list I'm reflecting that like my relationship to Harry Potter is changing over time Harry Potter was such a huge part of my teen years and such a huge part of like me identifying as a, a like having a fandom it's a part of my like kind of internal DNA as a reader or as a consumer of media in a way that it will never go like it can't disappear really like it will always be there. I think my relationship to that changes over time and frankly changes as like JK Rowling continues to say things and add to the world and whatever but this core series is just like a key part of my internal like mental landscape of how the media like how books work so for that like it I, always has to be a favorite series of mine I think I say that I mean I would have said the same thing about Narnia a few years ago and I I didn't put it on this list so I don't know but for now it still is I have conflicted feelings about it but I just know these stories know these characters in a way that for now at least it feels like it still has to be on this list and I haven't reread in a long time it might be interesting to try to do that uh but yeah these books, not an original pick, but I felt like it did still need to be on here pretty high. Number five is an ongoing series that I absolutely love, and that is the Sai Changeling seri series from Nalini Singh. The new book in this series every year that we get is truly a highlight of my reading year. This series is urban fantasy with a heavy dose of romance, and I would just say that it's it has the kind of thoughtful overall plot management that I really look for in a standout series. This is a world I just love and love returning to. It's very cozy. It's very comfy. These are very bingeable books. I would say that there's definitely a couple of like ones that I don't think have aged as well, but I do think that these are books that are consistently interesting and have interesting things to say or to think about with like gender dynamics and that kind of stuff. So I think that this is a, always a thoughtful series. And like I said, I think the political machinations are really what like stand out about these um, in a way that I think is... Is really potent. So this is number five, an ongoing series that I still love, which is also true of number four, which is the In-Depth series from J.D. Robb, which I still love and read, even 50 books in. So this is one where I think that this is like a really interesting mix of sci-fi and mystery with a heavy dose of like romance or whatever, but really it's mostly sci-fi and mystery for me at this point, just with fantastic character development. That to me is what really stands out in these books. They're procedural crime of the week kind of stories. Yeah, I just think that the the mysteries uh, that are supported by this fantastic cast of characters is really what like stands out. So absolutely love this. Can't wait to keep reading. Number 51 comes out in September you know your girl will be diving on into that. Okay, top three. So I'm gonna say number three is Lord of the Rings. Now, this feels somewhat like a cheat because J.R.R. Tolkien definitely intended this to be one single volume. That's how I have it as, as widely thought of as a trilogy. And I also had this whole thing about like, does a trilogy really count as a series? I don't know. It feels to me like this is a book that belongs more on the series list than the single book list. I don't know. That's kind of where my head's at with it right now anyway. So for now, I think I'm going to think of this as a series. Uh, and again, not an original opinion. People love Lord of the Rings. But this, I, I really, I tried to read this book, couldn't get into it. 
then I the first movie came out and I finally kind of wrapped my head around all the characters and all the world stuff and then dove back into the book and just like polished polished all of them off um so I absolutely love this book it's just so rich I took a seminar on this in grad school there's plenty to dissect it's just fantastic so yeah number three again not an original choice but one that is my choice. Okay, number two. Number two and number one really duked it out for me. I was really conflicted, but I, I'm gonna follow my heart. So number two is Poirot. The first one being The Mysterious Affair at Styles. And yeah, like I was saying, Agatha Christie is my all-time favorite author. There are two of her series on this list because I just love her books. I think what tipped this not being number one for my series is just the fact that there are highs and lows in this series. There's a lot of highs and lows. It's not as consistent. Some of her very best books are Poirot books, but not all of her best books are Poirot books. So I felt, and, and the other thing is that the, this is so episodic. That was kind of the other piece that made me feel like maybe this doesn't really belong as like the top of my series list since it is more episodic and I don't necessarily think of Poirot as going on this super interesting character development journey over the course of it. But I absolutely love the Poirot books. Well-deserved number two, but couldn't quite edge out number one, which is decided to go with Kate Daniels. Um, and I went with Kate Daniels because this really does just feel like a series. It is serialized. There is major character development and plot development over the course of the books. Each book works on its own. To my mind, the two clear weak ones in this are number one and number six, but even those are still very enjoyable, very readable. Um, it, this has a couple of books in it that I think are just like absolutely fantastic examples of genre fiction and what it can do. Urban fantasy, mystery plots, overarching romance. It's just so great. It's exactly what I love. And when I think of like, what is my favorite series? I think I just I have to say Kate Daniels, at least right now. So that is what won my favorite series list. So yeah, uh, in these trying times when we are all kind of stuck at home or a lot of us are, um, I just thought it might be a fun thing to talk about some of my favorite series because I think that can be a really enjoyable reading experience. It's just sort of tucking in with a series and getting totally lost in it. I definitely, with some of these, have had that experience at kind of like harder points in my life. Like I'll always remember I binge read this I Changeling series when I was looking for a job after grad school, like things like that definitely have memories associated with binging some of these. So that is my list, but I would be curious to hear what your all-time favorite series is. Definitely let me know that in the comments below. And yeah, I think that will do it for this video. If you will believe it, just standing here and talking has completely wiped me out and I need to go lay down again. So um, I will catch you guys later. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you're so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. Hope you're having an absolutely lovely day and I will just talk to you soon. Bye.